So we're going to present data to go. It's your ICP sensors digitized um, with a product that we have released go that's quite popular and quite cool. Um, our challenge has been trying to differentiate this with other things that are kind of saturating the market. Um, and one thing I want to add here, uh, one of the challenges is that we'll, we'll focus on ICP today, but a nice feature about this product is that it doesn't really have to be ICP. We'll talk about it later, but we have options to kind of mix and match uh, traditional voltage signals. So all of the benefits that we'll talk about today with, you know, ICP piezoelectric devices or microphones that operate on, you know, constant current power, the same kind of power um, can all be used with this as well as a traditional voltage signal, you know, with a 10 volt swing works perfectly. Um, um, first, before we get into that, a little background on the modal shop. In 1990, we're based here out of Cincinnati, Ohio, and we are to you from our brand new shiny building. So we've been in here for a few months and getting settled. So you might know us a lot uh, in concert with PCB, Piezotronics. So they specialize in manufacturing any number of sensors, hundreds of them, ultimately different models. Um, so here at the modal shop though, we, sh we focus on shakers, and structural test products, and other little smart devices like the 45E39, lab-based metrology systems, our field calibration systems, um, and then also there is our recalibration and rental services. And all of us, PCB, uh, Mobile Shop, Larson Davis, and so on, we're all part of the MTS Sensors Corporation. And so about me a little bit. So I went to University of Cincinnati, like many of us here at the Mobile Shop. I'm a mechanical engineer, been at the shop about seven years now. Um, you know, likes, like to golf, like to race, when the tracks are open anyway, given our little pandemic situation. And then always like to get out and skiing, except, you know, rain in the winter is not my favorite. And good news, this does not qualify as an excessively long power plant. It's a perfect duration. <laughs> and about me, I'll never stop using this picture because I love it. It's ridiculous. It has a long story. Ask me, email me if you have questions about the picture. But I'll just tell you, long story short, I, we had, we're supposed to be taking pictures for picture day at work. And I kind of got sidetracked and found this ridiculous coat and stick on mustaches and so accidentally if you see my linkedin photo it's not this but on linkedin photo day i took this i've been at modal shop about 21 years um i lead the teams for both rental and recal services not real patient and um i don't really love cats to be fair and present presentations where everyone just reads all the slides so our goal is not to read the slides but today we might read some of the slides <laughs> What we want you to do is think about um, what this product does. And you have to frame this in mind. Um, it kind of puts you in the right mindset to kind of describe the magic of this product. Uh, we're trying to make high quality measurements more accessible across a wide range of things. So think about the steps involved between the object you want to measure and actually analyzing the data. Um, everything that's involved in the middle um, is a headache that you've probably solved. Or if you haven't solved, welcome to the test and measurement community. Um, but avoiding the T's, this product is the 485B39 that we're going to be talking about today. It's a two-channel device. We'll go into more details throughout the presentation. But this solves a lot of those challenges that um, you need to solve. And the interesting case, the use cases we'll talk about later um, kind of highlight the need for a product like this. Um, it powers the sensor. It digitizes it. Um, we'll talk about this in more detail during the specs too, but the data reduction and data storage um, occurs to the right of this product. It's just producing a digital stream that's properly conditioned um, to any device you can use. Some of the magic of this is it's hyper portability and it's super easy to set up and use. Um, so the overview for today is we wanna look um, why this product exists, comparing what's out there, kind of um, seeing seeing where this product fits in the grand scheme of products that relate to sound and vibration testing. Some specs and options, using the thing, kind of some hints and tips and proof of concept, if you will, and uh, some case studies we're gonna fly through pretty quick. So 
why does this product exist? I'm going to give three examples here, but really, like everything, it's hard for us when we make a product to design and dream up everything it's going to get used for in a really clever way. The first one I like to do is, let's say you're teaching someone how to take measurements for the first time. Um, there's a lot of things that you have to solve, and we'll just generally categorize them in these three things. Pick the right sensor. Well, you first have to pick what you're going to measure. Picking the right sensor, the right temperature, how to mount them properly, um, you know, avoid mass loading, do worry about cabling issues. That's always a nightmare that you have to solve. Um, getting that signal into a data stream to use is another challenge. Oftentimes labs may have this solved, but it's definitely a challenge that's worthy of an education study, but it's not the end goal of a test and measurement training session. And then finally, analyzing the, day, the data, getting what you want out of it, making meaningful results out of your measurements. That's another challenge as well. So today, I think it helps to frame it in these three sections about why this product exists in the middle. Um, that product needs to be configured. And if you've ever taken a professional um, analyzer, it can take a lot of work. We feel this 45B39 solves this quite a bit. This is a hyper popular product for the education market because of the ease of use. And you can focus on the real test measurement challenges that you may have about picking the right sensors and all the parameters that go with that. And about picking the right analysis parameters and all of the options that come along with that. Um, not to say that this is trivial in the middle, and we'll talk about this in this why does this product exist section. But it has to do a lot of smart conditioning. It has to be a linear system. It has to be a professional grade system. So, but it makes it a nice choice for education and learning about taking a proper measurement. The next one that I'd want to say why this product exists is remote field testing. Let's say you need to take some data from a remote plant and Sending a measurement expert can happen, but you only need 20 minutes of data taken. Um, or let's say there's a pandemic going on, which severely adds to the complexity of sending someone somewhere. Your uh, locality may need a quarantine period when you arrive, come or go at a location, and it may not be needed. You may have a field test engineer that's not well versed in taking sound and vibration measurements, but is um, there and can be taught. So if you go back to these three bins that I'm positing kind of make up a test and measurement channel, some of this is solved in this case. In a field test, you already have your sensors. You're likely just duplicating something that's worked everywhere. Same thing with the right side, the analysis. But often in this situation, your own analyzer can be too valuable both in money and in workload to be sent to the field for a quick test and your own analyzer can be overkill. So sending a 45B39 is a great solution to solve this challenge. And people have been loving this product for this very solution. Um, any guesswork out of installing an analyzer on a remote desktop or you know what have you, um, we'll see how easy it is to use later. And the third case is very similar to the second, but it's just portable testing. Let's say when you personally want to go somewhere and take some data pretty quick. Um, think about the steps involved. Uh, your own analyzer. Again, the first and third bins, if you will, are pretty much solved. You should know how to use your sensors or your sensor suite you have available. But your own system might be already in use or it's just cumbersome to move where you want to test. In some cases, it's hard to power. There's a lot of solutions that the 45B39 can really solve. And you can just fit this guy in your pocket and you're ready to take data anywhere. Um, next one, I want to kind of go over a weird chart that I've, uh, when we started talking about this product, I think is really important and I think it's missed a lot. And we're going to compare what's out there or I to call this, what is this thing again? We'll cover the specs in the next section, but I want to highlight what this product is, how it compares, things that differentiate this product that go beyond just traditional specs. So it's kind of a bridge between why does this product exist in uh, reading the spec sheet. And I want to start with like a simple 101 graph. Um, 
and the axes will choose, you know, like something between a sensor and a system and something between not so smart and smart. And, you know, this is a little, uh, you know, can rile up some people for sure. I mean, for example, isn't a sensor or a system binary? Isn't something either a sensor or a system? Eh, I'll, I'll offer some positions that I believe that maybe might make you think a little bit different. And the same thing, what's smart and not so smart? Again, um, try just to hear it through and see if you think this is right. I think the target that we're trying to do uh, is to get high quality measurements more accessible. That's the goal of this product, something portable, something flexible, and something real time in a professional package. Um, let's take one example, like an ICP or IEPE signal conditioner. Um, I'll just show you a picture here of an example. This is a one channel box that our sister company PCB makes. What's the goal of an ICP conditioner? It, part, it's part of the measurement chain, goes between a sensor and a system. It gives power to the internal electronics of a sensor. It does a lot of things that we take for granted now in a professional measurement chain, like anti-aliasing. Um, some units can provide pre-filtering, gain. There's a lot of different sizes and shapes and powering options for this, but it doesn't really do much else. It doesn't do any analysis. Um, so I'd say hmm, it's, you know, definitely related to the sensor, doesn't analyze much. And maybe the smart ranking is a little too low there. It does a lot of smart things that we take for granted in a professional test and measurement chain. Then next, we want to compare like a modern uh, analog to digital digitizer card. You know, you're getting your sensors and you're trying to put them into something to analyze. And there's a lot of cards out there that you can just throw in, you know, four channels more, eight channels more and add to it. Um, also, a lot of these cards provide the same power to the internal electronics of the sensors. Um, it's all expect all the good stuff you'd expect from a sensor front end, and you can use any sensor. But there's a lot of drivers and there's a lot of setup. There's a lot of software you need for analysis, a lot of software options, even with the same cards. And really, the price starts to get in the way. Um, it's, you know, getting towards that bridge of a professional, almost permanent solution. Um, and the cost is accordingly as well. This one, you know, it's hard to talk about if we're talking about specialized solutions. And here, it's a lot of buzzwords. We're talking about the Internet of Things or Industry 4.0, EtherCAT solutions, cloud-based monitoring. There's a ton of new products um, almost weekly. There's smart plant monitoring. Some things have real-time alerts. Uh, some of the things that aren't great, they have often have a fixed sensor, which can be limited frequency, limited dynamic range. Um, it's an embedded sensor, which all the problems come with that, meaning uh, you're not mounting directly your test object. Often you'll get them without individualized calibration, so there's tons of troubles with that as well. And often you lose this all sense of smart sensor design, really what goes into a professional testing grade, uh, test grade measurement setup. There's no advanced controls, no data stream in many cases. Um, you'll have a fixed app ecosystem. And a lot of these are heading towards a, you know, a revenue stream. So you gauge what's out there, but it gets a little tricky to compare apples and apples. Um, so I'm putting these all as complete systems and there's some really okay ones and some really dumb ones. So we're probably a little generous on the high ranking for what our goal to take smart, portable, fast measurements with is. Or digitize the sensor. This is another popular solution that's happening a lot. Pictured here is our, um, what we call Digiducer, which is a professional grade piezoelectric Excel in a package with just a USB that you'd hook up. And it operates very similarly to the product we're talking about today. Some of these are wide frequency, wide dynamic range, like this Digiducer. And there's a huge list of third-party apps to support a ton of test types. Some are MEMS-based, um, which will have, you know, impacts on your frequency range and the type of test you can take. But you're fixed to a sensor solution. You can't really use it anywhere. Um, some require drivers. Uh, ours shown here doesn't, but, you know, 
I'd say this is right in the middle between a sensor and a system. It's almost a system itself. Um, if you go back to those columns, this is right in the middle, but it's not so smart in that you're fixed to the sensor you're using. I really think setting the target for us is at the core using a sensor manufacturer's know-how um, in the setup, using the appropriate sense for each test, um, letting you take real-time data if you wish, providing a properly conditioned pure digital signal stream, something that's high dynamic range, high frequency capable, something you can use between piezo devices and other sensors. With a sensor manufacturer's attention to calibration is an important point. Um, it allows you to do appropriate sensor mounting, has things like anti-aliasing. You're not just limited to vibration. Um, you can use sound or force or pressure, speed. Um, it's easily portable. You can use it anywhere. Really plug and play with no drivers. And things that are in tandem that you might not see in a spec sheet, uh, spec sheet you can keep your data. Something we think a target should be, you should avoid a revenue stream model if possible. Um, and this hardware at least allows you to do that pretty nicely. So again, talking about the 45B39 here, here it is pictured a little better. Um, and let's dive into some of the specs. Yes, yeah, so you kind of understand our mindset. I will go through your more common specs that you might think of when looking at a, a sort of sensor acquisition or whatever it may be. Uh, so the 45B39, which is your two-channel with a BNC input, and it has a 4 milliamp of ICP or IEPE power, as the IEEE standard is going to call it, um, built in. Um, and then also with your related high-pass and low-pass filtering. Um, so, for example, the frequency range is about 0.8 hertz to uh, 20 kilohertz, and the sampling rate is up to about 48 kilohertz. So you're corresponding anti-aliasing filter, for example, with the 48 kilohertz uh, sampling rate would be about 23 kilohertz. So it kind of gives you a feel for what it's capable of. Um, so it's a case grounded stainless steel case. So tough for out there in the field. Uh, it's 24 bit ADC as default, but then depending on the software, which we'll touch on a bit later that you can use, could be 16 bit. And then it just, uses your typical USB type A connector. So it runs off uh, less than 500 milliwatts or five volts, 100 milliamps. So you can use, up, use it with just a typical USB, or plug it into your PC or tablet or whatever it may be. Um, so leading into that, again, simple plug and play. So it's using just a USB class one audio driver. So there's no proprietary piece of software driver you have to have installed on whatever you may be using this with. Um, so whether it's a Windows device, an iOS device, you know, an iPad, an iPhone, or an Android, a Mac, desktop, PC, or even just a Linux-based programming, something like you might see in a, a Raspberry Pi kind of situation. So it is open to use as you can dream up, essentially. Um, so then with this, too, we've since expanded since uh, we first came out with the, the standard 45B39 to also offer it in a voltage mode. So essentially there's no ICP or IEPE power on the channels in the voltage mode B45, E39, or it can be set up as a mixed mode uh, where one is IEPE and the other channel is your voltage mode. Um, and then in the voltage mode uh, up to a plus or minus 10 volt peak to peak range with that too. So this opens the door to a number of different sensors you can use outside of your typical ICP type sensors. Um, so this kind of branches off from the 45, you know, hardware, 45B39 hardware itself into what measurements you can make. So it is ultimately software dependent. So anything depending on the software from a general overall RMS value of acceleration or whatever sensor you're using um, to more optimized software is offering FFT and time, time waveform and octaband uh, collection, then you can get even further into your own customized base applications using MATLAB, LabVIEW, or certainly common. Python is a, a seems to be a popular language currently. Um, and then any number of other languages, for example, using a Raspberry Pi or similar with it um, to make your own custom little measurement devices. Uh, so here's a few just quick screenshots examples. So the 
center two screenshots, that's based on a PC program. So you can see um, everything from the octave van uh, and, and using it with something like a laser tag, you can do some rotational analysis. And then the other two on either side are a few apps from an Android or from an iPhone. Um, so for example, the, the iPhone app on the right of your screen, we're just taking your basic overall, overall mass, where you can essentially take a quick measurement and say a bearing and try to understand if there's an issue there quickly on a, on a machine vibration issue. Um, and we have some more tools on our website that you can use to kind of understand what options are out there, what are, what's more optimized, what's more of a uh, program you might use for a custom setup. So we've got this on our webpage to kind of help parse down all the options and understand what you can use or what might suit your particular application best. So that's sort of your step one when using 45B39. What are you trying to do? Is it, is it going to be more of a uh, custom application where you're installing this on machine for a machine? Or is it for that quick field use where you're out in the field and need to make a quick measurement out of your pocket? And some piece of some app on your cell phone that's easily accessible. So we try to whittle that down to make decisions on where you want to start. And what comes next? Course, as Bruce had mentioned earlier, your sensors. So any number of ICP sensors, so accelerometers, microphones, modal impact hammers, the laser tac LT2, which is an IEPE uh, laser tachometer that we make here at the modal shop, um, your dynamic force or strength sensors, and then you know, potentially any other voltage-based sensor, uh, maybe a size limit. Yeah, an LBDT, perhaps you have a a more typical strain-based load cell that you're already conditioning for and just need to record what's going on out of that, uh, kind of, you name it. And it's pretty simple to connect. We've got our quick little video here using an app on an iPad. So it's just as simple as getting the correct adapter based on the device you're using. So a PC would plug straight in, an iPad or a Android device, you may, you're gonna need some small adapter. And then the uh, 45B39 itself will be recognized uh, by the device as you plug it in. So you can see this app looks over loops again here. Wait for it to zoom in. And then you'll see it was using the onboard microphone from the iPad. And as we plug in, it immediately finds the 45. So from there, in this particular app, we can directly input the sensitivity of the sensor we're using. And you're off to the races, taking data. And you can even see, I want to highlight a few things um, on this too. When you plug in the 5B39, you can see the green light light up. Just watch on the left, the product. It'll um, kind of flash and then it shows a green solid that it's operating. Um, and not to, not to oversimplify everything, but you can even take like a voice recorder app on your phone, plug this in, take data, and send it to yourself and post-process it in MATLAB or something. It's a hyper Excel even, just a CSV output, any right, any number of formats. It's a simple, simple device is kind of what we're trying to get at here. This is a little rough for a video, but it's really all that you do. It's fantastic. And then, so as far as calibration, so as mentioned there, um, we can, in that, in the video shown before, that would be a direct input for your calibration of your sensor to input the sensitivity. Um, now, it could be a, something as simple as using a handheld shaker or portable portable vibration calibrator to give you that known source. If you don't have, if you're not using a software or something that has that direct input, so you can get a reference level. Um, and then, so the 45B39, just I guess, as a fun. Not really fun, but as a tech note for those of you might be wondering how how exactly the calibration works. So there is a calibration loaded, so to speak, a calibration anyway, on onto the 45B39 that essentially scales the digital samples to your voltage coming in. So that's where an optimized software will read that, and that's where we can input direct sensitivity. If you are developing your own software, that's a step you'd have to make in your own uh, code to make sure you pull that scaling in to then scale your sensor cor correctly as you're streaming in that voltage data and allow in a manual sensitivity input or something exactly. for the customer yeah and that's and we'll when we send out our uh, kind of follow-up email we've got a tech note on that now for some more details we won't get in the nitty-gritty of that here but just so you know 
and around and base heading for home here, we're going to talk about a few case studies. We're going to go real quick and go just fast and furious. But uh, these are some that we thought were just fantastic. Um, there's in Western Australia, there's an iron ore mine. Um, they use this device to predict uh, transfer chute blockage between two conveyors. They use Excels and uh, Raspberry Pi Model 3B with some signal processing built uh, in the uh, in you know the smart digital product here, 45B39. Um, I don't know how we want to do these. There's a field service or health checks at elevators. This is a perfect case of field use. It's a custom app built for field serv service engineers. It lets them measure both FFT and time-based vibration data. And they upload it to a server, and then this expert remotely assesses data. Um, who can recommend further analysis? It's fantastic. Uh, it's been a nice success. Um, there's some bandsaw intelligent monitoring. It's been, been done with the digital smart product line. Uh, Whether test and blade life assessment on vibration. And these band special uh, saws were a little special. The material was really expensive and the process took hours or up to a day. If the blade breaks during the process, it's expensive material and time. So they use the digital smart products with the cloud-based machine monitoring uh, coupled with a custom iOS app. Um, Vibe Cloud is another new product that's great for condition monitoring and pr uh, predictive maintenance. It uh, kind of changes the way vibration data is collected and analyzed uh, by using mobile devices. Um, that's probably, we can almost do a, a more thorough slide on that next time. And then a lot of typical case studies or anything you can think of for just two channel apps like transmissibility, correlation, binaural recordings, impact testing, shock absorbers, trans, you know, any transmissibility you can think about, um, education labs, transmission loss, STC and sound quality. And I want to say, you know, this is a weird thing, but I'm an old, I'm getting to be an old guy. I'm an AARP member now. The, uh, <laughs> but um, uh, a really smart guy in the industry presented a paper the other year to say, hey, um, remember back to the day when we just had two channel analyzers, um, you know, back when HP was making analyzers, uh, we could do full modal using uh, a small channel analyzer and, you know, roving sensors, roving hammers, doing things like that. You can populate a full data set and do modal with this. It's probably not our first pick to do something like that. But this is a smart product, a professional enough product that you could do it. Um, couple it with some smart software, start populating your data matrices, and take a modal. It's, it's an interesting test for sure, but probably something to give some, to, uh, some of your students instead of you doing it. But it's the way things were done. Uh, and other people just use our digital smart products to grab and go. You take data quick. Depending on the software, you could take data in G or you know, meters per second squared, or you could integrate to velocity and more. But there's a paradigm shift that can occur when you're testing using a mobile device. Helpful things like integrating a picture are now simple. Uh, integrating a video or a GPS location. You can record and share and report data on the fly. Uh, and you could even do advanced things, even with a simple phone. Compare the data against a baseline or even on a standard level. Here it's an ISO standard level. Uh, so the possibilities get to be quite complex and quite specialized, which is, you know, uh, a nice niche to be in. Um, and then we'll always push in our series for the summer if you have no capital or if you want to try this product. We offer a rental program here at Model Shop, lets you try before you buy. Use operational cash or program cash instead of capital. Make sure it's the device of your dreams that it's really going to be as loved as we think uh, you will love it, or everyone that's been using it so far loves it. And the sensors too. We have thousands of channels of Excels or mics or dynamic force or strain or pressure. We have a new rental price list we released last month on our web um, where this and many other products are available. Um, so in conclusion, sensors, schmensers, you know, hardware, that's great too. Nice thing about this 45B39 product is it's really portable. You can use it anywhere. Instantly set it up. It's real, it's tested measurement grade. 
um, with a high dynamic range, no special formats, and it's open platform. Um, it's it's a really nice product. Thanks so much. My name is Bruce. I'm Chad. And thanks for joining today.